Hello wrestling fans of the world, welcome back to the Video Bros Network. I am Bobby Munson and joining me on the line today, he is my co-host, he is my co-video bro, he is the man with the angelic voice, he is Papa Smokes, how you doing today? Hey, how you doing Munson, how you wrestling people doing out there? Hopefully everybody's doing good, staying safe, and keeping their social distancing up so that we can get past this whole COVID thing and back to some live professional wrestling here in Saskatchewan. I know, Papa Smokes, that our counterparts in Alberta have got some shows coming up, live shows that are limited to 100 seats. If anybody's interested in those shows, definitely go and check out. I believe uh, RCW has got one coming up even this Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this podcast will probably be released sometime after that happens. But all the best of luck to them out there. But make sure to keep that social distancing up. We want to make sure everybody stays healthy and safe. Speaking of the Alberta boys, they are on our minds, Papa Smokes. We are going to be talking about them again tonight. Uh, our first topic in the night, though, is going to be talking about the greatest wrestling matches of all times. Just this Sunday, WWE hosted Backlash 2020 featuring a match between Edge and Randy Orton that they were dubbing the greatest wrestling match of all time. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. We are then going to move on to the topic of Alberta wrestling, and that's going to be the Northern Alberta Invitational Tournament, the semifinals and the finals. We got a chance to finally check those out and got a review going. And then we're going to go a little bit back to the retro, and we've got a topic talking about some of the great African-American wrestlers of all time. Papa Smokes has got a lot of information on them here tonight, so hopefully everybody sit back enjoying their time. Go ahead, click the subscribe button down below, and turn on the notification bell so you know when we release new material right here on the Video Bros Network. So Papa Smokes, we're going to go back to the topic, the greatest wrestling matches of all time. This is a topic that I wanted to bring up, especially because what the WWE is looking to do is start to dub certain matches with these type of things. And they're basing storylines on Google searches and algorithms so that when you go to type something into your damn internet search these days, you want to find out what the greatest wrestling match of all time is, you're going to be given a whole bunch of feedback of WWE and the Edge and Randy Orton match. Now, I know we both watched the match, and uh, we were talking just before we went on the air here today, but let's uh, go back into that topic a little bit on that match before we get into our actual picks and some of the greatest matches of all time. Uh, Edge and Orton, Papa Smokes, tell the fans what you thought of that one. Well, first of all, I, I like the way they marketed that match as the greatest wrestling match of all time before it had actually even occurred. That, that takes some uh, audacity, I think, to do that in a certain way. But uh, I agree with you that uh, some of it is done for uh, algorithms on the Internet and such like that. And uh, in researching this uh, topic and uh, looking up some stuff and refreshing my memory, I noticed that uh, I came upon quite a few lists of the greatest matches of all times. And uh, I was having a hard time finding uh, any any matches on any of those lists that came before the year 2000. So uh, e even that is just skewed to the to the modern memory of the modern fan kind of thing. And uh, it was a little disheartening to say the least. Yeah, you know what? I'm uh, right there with you in doing that research. I came across a lot of those lists. And, you know, the ones I could find that went a little bit more in depth had some stuff from earlier on and some stuff that I would 100% agree with being up there for some of the great wrestling matches. But then looking through some of these lists, I was a little shocked that a lot of them aren't even, in my opinion, real wrestling matches. Like when you start to get into some of these like hardcore matches, these brawls and stuff like that, they're, they're great and they have their spot in professional wrestling. But when I'm talking about the greatest wrestling match to me personally, Paul Spokes, I'm thinking about two athletic performers putting on a mat classic inside the squared circle, not something that involves foreign objects, chairs and dirty tactics. Yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, also, I think to be taken into consideration for this topic is is the uh, the angle and the build up to the match and uh, the tension that would be uh, uh, created by the by the management of whatever federation it is beforehand to get the fans really on the edges of their seat before the match has even happened to really get the uh, the excitement and the anticipation of such a match going beforehand. Which is which you know I mean. To the credit of the WWE, they had that going with Edge and Orton. I mean, they've got a 
storied history with one another to begin with. And they've been uh, having this feud going on ever since Edge's return to the WWE in recent memory. So it had the build that they were going for. Uh, to me, the execution, uh, like we were talking about earlier, I enjoyed most of the match. I, I'd say a good 90% of it was a very well done match between two very skilled individuals inside the squared circle. I didn't like it when it started to get into all the different spots, the kick out of all these finishers. And again, it goes back to you. Now you're demeaning the finishers of past greats inside that squared circle as well, too. I mean, when you got guys kicking out of multiple things like the Olympic slam, you got guys kicking out of the rock bottom and all this kind of stuff. It really starts to demean those finishing moves as being finishers inside the squared circle. Yeah, and do you suppose that they were trying to celebrate those in a way by by featuring them in that match and uh, giving the fans a little walk down memory lane? But I agree that that it, it demeans the power of those moves and the history that they've had of winning matches and winning championships. And uh, yeah, same thing. I, I felt like the first part of the match was uh, was was it was nice and slow it had a nice build it had some holds it had some grappling and uh, i was kind of thinking wow this is starting out to be a pretty good match between two uh, great wrestlers and uh, i kind of felt like the same thing I, I think they uh when the match was laid out that they decided to throw some spots in there some a uh, whole bunch of high spots and a whole bunch of false finishes and then Ultimately, it ended up looking like a lot of, uh, of modern wrestling does. So you kind of lost it for me, uh, uh, sort of eighty percent of the way through the match. And you know, and what happened to the lost art of utilizing the ring to get those uh, those finishes? Like you say, the false finishes. It becomes kick out after kick out, which demeans those moves. Whatever happened to the days of a guy getting his foot on the rope, or you know, being able to, you know, the other guy has perform the move but he's a little bit out of it himself can't quite get over there in time the other guy rolls outside the ring you know to make that separation so that you don't have to have the false finish you don't have to necessarily you know demean those classic moves at the same time you really kind of keep them strong while at the same time being able to like you said celebrate them and take a walk down memory lane yeah yeah i just think a bit of the art of of making a good match is, is slowly being lost through the years here a little bit uh and and it's kind of more catering to the to the short attention span of a lot of uh, a lot of people that uh that like things short that like to see highlights and not a full match and then want to just see the the high spots themselves and uh we all know that that that's not what makes a match is just the high spots it's the it's the whole build up it's the whole story they're telling which which should be, you know, in my opinion, or in the traditional uh, uh, presentation of pro wrestling, should start off slow and start off psychologically, and until the until the blistering action gets going uh, later in the match. And uh, yeah, I got to agree with you there. I, I got it lost it after a little while. Yeah, definitely did. But you know, at the same time, in terms of like what we have seen in the last little while from professional professional wrestling. I got to say, it was one of the more enjoyable matches I've seen in some time from one of the bigger professional wrestling companies. Yeah, I also agree. I, I, I'm not uh, much of a WWE fan, uh, but I realize that they, they have a lot of talent. They have a lot of good matches, or uh, at least a few good matches sprinkled in here and there. I enjoyed that matt riddle versus timothy thatcher uh, recently that was a fantastic match and uh yeah i just uh, basically uh without watching a whole bunch of their product i hear about some matches that i think i would like and uh i'm not much of an edge fan but uh, i like randy orton and i know those two guys can handle uh, a good match against each other so uh yeah i, I had no problem tuning into that and enjoying it Exactly. So, but now let's uh, let's talk about some ones we did enjoy throughout our lives here, at Papa Smokes. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on some of the greatest wrestling matches of all time. What uh, what ones would rank up there for you? Well, first of all, this this question kind of boggles my mind in a way because I've seen a, a lot of matches I consider great. Um, there are some there are a lot of great matches that that I haven't seen also, and I, I'm obviously working on that, but. Uh, it's a really tough question and it goes into you know what what makes a great match and and like you were saying with some people like hardcore matches and and 
if somebody gets power bombed through five tables and a bunch of light tubes onto a onto a, a spiked bed of broken glass, like some people find that the ultimate and the best. So it, of course, it all is uh, subjective and comes down to taste. But um, I'm just going with the more traditionalist view of uh, of uh, the the tension in a match, the uh, the technical expertise of both. I like some uh, I like some cheating that doesn't get caught by the referee. I like uh, I like some submission holds. I, I like various things in matches. So uh, yeah, like I say, I was looking at I wanted to see what some other people's opinions were of some uh, great matches throughout time. I was looking at uh, Dave Meltzer's uh, Observer uh, five star matches. Uh, it's quite a tremendously long list of them. I didn't think the, that he had rated that many five stars, but uh, it's a heck of, heck of a lot of them, uh, the majority of them being from uh, Japanese promotions, which I'm a little behind in my watching. I haven't watched a lot of uh, AJPW and NJPW from uh, the past, say, 20 years or something like that. There's a bunch of those uh, Okada and Tanahashi matches and uh, stuff like that 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 uh, look like technical masterpieces, but uh, I haven't watched them yet. I noticed uh, Kenny Omega is is represented quite highly in uh, Meltzer's star system, which uh, didn't make me want to watch any of those either because I'm not a fan. <laughs> but um, yeah, it all comes down to the what your subjective uh, preferences are in a wrestling match. And man, I, I like to see the guys do some uh, technical grappling i like to see uh, some brawling if emotions get wild and uh, and a good finish with uh, some emotion involved uh, that that how do you feel about that munson like what did you take into uh, consideration when thinking about this uh, I'm on the same page as you too. I mean, I love the emotion in a match. Like if if the match feels like it truly means something to somebody, and there's a you know a moment at the end where you really you know you you almost feel like you're there with them, you're enjoying that moment with them. It really draws you in, especially after a real good you know a grappling match full of submissions. You know, like you, I I'm okay with the cheating side of it as long as it's in that way that it. It doesn't get caught and it doesn't get too out of hand where, you know, oh, the refs just turn out a blind eye to all these like eight broken tables outside of the fucking ring and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, as long as we can keep it like a sensible wrestling match, like, you know, both you and I really enjoy. I mean, there's a lot to be said for some of the stuff that's out there. And I mean, you could go modern, you can go classic. Like, I mean, I haven't written down a whole lot of names here, but. You know, if you want to talk modern, I, I got to go back to a match that did come from the dub, and that was at WrestleMania between Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar. I mean, I've crapped all over yeah. Brock Lesnar, especially, like, in a modern sense and stuff, just because, you know, of course you don't feel like he has the love for the business like he did or, you know, wanted to at the first when he first came out. But, man, that buildup with him and Angle and that match execution, that match was awesome. And that was between two guys who are pure wrestling talent i mean these guys both former you know you know wrestlers throughout their life and stuff like that they're both greco-roman wrestlers and everything they trained in all of that and they put on one hell of a performance if you're gonna go by a modern standard for sure yeah i have seen it too and i i agree that what a fantastic match it was uh, that's the one at wrestlemania where uh they were both injured, right? Uh, Angle had his neck problems quite severely and almost didn't participate in that match. Yeah. I think Brock had a fairly uh, fairly significant injury before he went in that. And then there are some spots in that match where you just think, wow, one or the other or both of them could be seriously injured because they, they, made, it, they made it look so good. They made it look so smooth. And uh, it had emotion. It had grit. It had some... Uh, the spirit of competition, but also uh, like a, an undercurrent of hatred between the two of them. And uh, wow, yeah, that, that's a fine pick for uh, for one and, and two guys that deserve uh, to be to to be in a match uh, of that stature. Oh, for sure, and it's one I could uh, you know I can go back and watch a match like that. Just like you know, and I went and had to watch the, watch this uh, again and everything. I've now seen it a couple times, but. Uh, you remember 1976 from the NWA Missouri Heavyweight Championship when Bob Backlund finally defeated Harley Race? Oh, wow. Yeah, yes, I do. 
Um, that was the beauty of that uh, St. Louis territory there is that they had the NWA champ through a lot and just had a thriving promotion there too. And uh, to to not only have the NWA champ, but, but have WWWF champ at that time, uh, Bob Backlund come down on loan from uh, McMahon Sr. there was just, well, what a super match and what, what a thrill for fans. Yeah, and it, I mean, to me, like... When it comes to pure wrestling, Bob Backlund, yeah, I mean, he ranks up there for me. I mean, I know I've told you this before. I've always been a big Bob Backlund fan. Really enjoy the man's work. I feel, feel he's just got what it takes to put on a good wrestling clinic inside the ring. Yeah, I also love Backlund. Uh, uh, as a kid, uh, being a little more invested in the storylines around wrestling, I, I, I didn't like Backlund. But as an adult, uh, seeing the whole scheme of things... Uh, Backland was such a tremendously uh, outstanding talent and uh, and really did the work required. Like he, he did a lot of those super matches, uh, champion versus champion. I remember him wrestling Nick Bockwinkle for AWA title uh, versus WWF title. And uh, he fought Harley Race and uh, a couple of other world champions uh, back in the day too. And then did his work over in Japan too, having some... Uh, bang up matches against Antonio Inoki and uh, Backlund was the real thing and then you know and then I got to go back to when I remember him too as a kid uh, when he made his return to WWF at the time and the feud that he had with Brett the Hitman Hart and even the I quit match that the two of them had at WWF Survivor Series I believe it was 1993 and I mean there was so much storyline and emotion behind that whole entire thing and the execution I mean I don't know if I ever watched a Bret Hart match that I didn't enjoy throughout my life yeah because Bret Hart made you believe that it was real like made you believe that this was a real athletic contest and he was giving 110% to win it that's why Hart's one of the best of all time and in my opinion also is that uh, yeah, he, he was there to show you that wrestling was no joke and uh, I'll, I'll always love his work for that but it's also a testament to Backlund too that at that time uh Coming back, it'd be in his late fifties or however old he was, still in such good shape. But he had another run as champ. Yeah, I, mean, he... I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that when when he first split with McMahon uh, back in the seventies after he lost the belt to uh, Superstar Graham. He uh, it was an acrimonious split. Uh, him and uh, McMahon and the WWF had were on different pages by this time. And this is of course uh, Vince Junior starting to. Uh, take control of the company and he wanted to give Backlund a gimmick and change him around and all this other stuff and Backlund said hell no man like I'll never do that shit and then just the the fact that years went by and and, uh, opinions changed and feelings changed and he came back and they gave him another title run it's just outstanding I was so pleased and I think Brett also uh, didn't want to drop his belt to just anyone uh, when he was champion and uh, he found Backlund uh, a worthy contender for that too. Oh and anybody should have even with Backlund being in his 50s the man came back and he he redesigned himself and made that a very interesting feud it's just a shame that he was really nothing more than a bit of a transitional champion at the time just to get the belt around Kevin Nash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, uh, as good as his uh, little run was and, and victory over Brett, uh, wasn't it awful how he lost the belt to him? Squash match to uh, Diesel Nash there, who just, but yeah, was just undeserving of it, in my opinion. But uh, well, whatever, the, the, that's what happened, and uh, that's what we got. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, but, I mean, that that's the way it was. And Backlund, great Hart, I mean, you know, we could sit here all day and talk about Bret Hart matches even, and maybe that's for uh, another time here on Ring Respect, because I, I, I could list them all day long. I enjoy the man's work. I think you had no better, you know, in-ring performer. I mean, if you're going to take any criticisms from Bret, you could talk about, you know, maybe, you know, like his mic work wasn't like a 10 out of 10, but, you know, his in-ring work was a 12 out of 10, so it more than made up for anything he couldn't do on a microphone. For sure. And and to stay on topic, I I would uh, suggest as a contender for greatest match of all time, uh, Hart versus Steve Austin in the I Quit match. I I watched that in a bar uh, live on pay-per-view and uh, 
I was just flabbergasted. I was falling out of my seat. I couldn't believe how great this match was. And uh, that would, that'll be one of my uh, all-time favorite matches uh, for sure. And I've got that down on my list. I, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, Papa Smokes. I got like four Bret Hart matches just from this list here. Yeah. Then I could have gone into a lot more. I mean, I had you could list every match that Bret no one ever had. I mean, I couldn't get enough of those two in the ring. And, uh, you know, and Owen, an underrated performer himself in so many ways. And then, you know, even Bret Hart and Roddy Piper SummerSlam for the Intercontinental Championship. Like, yeah. what a phenomenal Intercontinental Championship match that was. Maybe one of the better Intercontinental Championship matches of all time. Most definitely. And also, uh, anytime uh, Bret Hart and Mr. Perfect got in the ring, whether it was a pay-per-view match or a house show in alaska or it didn't matter where it was those two had some chemistry and respect for each other and both so tremendously skilled that uh it wasn't even possible for them to put on a mediocre match they were just too good another great wrestling match that uh, maybe doesn't come up enough and a lot of fans should go check out uh rick flair ricky steamboat 1989 clash of the champions six would be another yeah, good one yeah 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 absolutely uh that's, I have that down on my list as possibly my top match. A, a lot of people uh, think consider that the best match in wrestling history, and uh, I rewatched that one for uh, in, in preparing for this podcast. And uh, man, it's just it just absolute excellence. Uh, uh, once again, just both performers being so skilled and such veterans in the ring. The build up was there. The the the. Uh, the venue was was packed and gigantic for a world title match. Steamboat was champion in that, the one we're talking about here, and uh, Flair the challenger, and uh, the two guys just had such tremendous chemistry, and uh, everything they did looked absolutely perfect. Everything they did looked wild. It looked unplanned. It was just, just wrestling excellence there's no other way to put it yeah and i know we've talked about this before uh one-on-one -on -one, but you know growing up i didn't have the exposure to some of the uh other companies that you know other people might have been privileged to i wasn't as into the nwa and stuff as a kid i was kind of just my exposure was the wwf wcw so i didn't really get the opportunity to appreciate all the great wrestling that ever existed and stuff like that. But now going back and what I wish a lot of fans would do, because like you said, when we were looking on these lists and finding everything past 2000 and stuff, I think that modern fans would really benefit from going back and watching a lot of the old NWA tapes, uh, some of the Mid-South stuff, everything like that. Things that we talk about right here on Ring Respect, you know, go back and watch those because there is some awesome, awesome matches, not just wrestling matches, but if you do enjoy high spots and hardcore wrestling and stuff. I mean, man, there is some cool shit out there that people just haven't had an opportunity to see because they just don't know where to go look. But they, you know, check YouTube any time of the day for classic wrestling match. Or you know what? Hell, reach out to myself or Papa Smokes anytime. We'll uh, send you links to any of these types of matches that you want to find. Yeah, and it's just like um, uh, a lot of people's lists and a lot of people's... Uh, you know, memory is just uh, in accordance with uh, Vince McMahon Jr. era of WWE, such as uh, from the early 80s uh, on. And uh, it's just, if you can only watch the matches from one federation and from one promoter, it's just, it's limiting yourself to the different styles that are out there. And uh, including, we mentioned uh, Japanese, and I like to watch... Uh, lucha wrestling too and the more styles you watch the more you realize what an open form of professional wrestling is and how much can actually be done by clever wrestlers and clever promoters to get good matches out there and uh, it's just you know instead of eating hamburgers all the time you can go out to the whole worldwide world of food and, and try anything you want you know what i mean and it just it only improves your taste and improves your outlook if you uh try different styles and different flavors exactly so you know what uh as much as i'd love to talk uh, all the greatest wrestling matches all day long with you papa smokes we could go on forever about this uh we're running a little long we got two more great topics that we should go on so i think we're gonna go over to the second topic of the night and speaking of great wrestling hey we're talking alberta wrestling our counterparts from one province over 
who have been doing an excellent job out there. And before we get talking about the Northern Alberta Invitational Tournament, I just want to give a few quick shout outs to some of our pals out there. So a big shout out to the WrestleSode podcast, the Wooden Column Sports Network, Conversations with Love, Top Talent Wrestling Academy, all of you guys doing a hell of a job there in Alberta. Uh, from myself personally, and I'm sure for also from you, Papa Smokes, I mean, credit to every bit of the work that's going on out with our counterparts in Alberta there. Yeah, I, I couldn't wait to watch the second half of this uh, Northern Alberta Invitational Tournament. I, I think that our buddies up in Edmonton and in Alberta in general have such a great thing going on there. And, and I, part of it is the uh, great wrestling talent that's always come out of Alberta. But also, like you say, they have a crew behind the scenes of the commentators, the guys doing the podcast, the camera work, the editing and such that... They got a strong team there, and I, I can't help but tip my hat to the guys uh, every time I watch their stuff. Uh, keep up the good work, guys. And they've got some great podcasts there, too. I've been tuning in a lot lately. A little late to the party. I never catch the live ones. But, you know, they're very interactive with the fans, so if anyone gets a chance to catch their live ones, definitely check them out. I mean, they do an excellent job, and they do a great job of having fun and interacting with all of you. So if you want to have an opportunity to, you know, get to talk to some actual people inside of the business you know hop onto their podcast and uh, join in on them they're doing having a lot of fun and they'll have a lot to talk about because alberta wrestling making a comeback like we said earlier in the show i believe rcw is going to be having a show this saturday and i believe that uh i think the same is happening for manitoba if i'm not mistaken there papa smoke cwe might have a show coming up as yeah, well yeah yeah, so I mean, there, it's back to business a little bit with some new restrictions for some of our counterparts. Unfortunately, though, here in Saskatchewan, things have not quite changed. I think as of uh, this coming Monday from when we're recording this, uh, it would be phase four of our reopening stage here in Saskatchewan. And it's 4A, I guess is what they're calling it. Uh, we still will be limited to only 30 people on an indoor gathering as long as social distancing of two meters can be met between people and i think with that being said there you know i mean when we throw a prairie pro wrestling show pop smokes i mean 30 people that just about covers everybody that's there to help out with the show let alone the fact that we got to then have make space for the fans it's it here in saskatchewan there's no word on it yet it's not happening anytime soon as far as we know yeah yeah it's unfortunate but uh capacity of 30 isn't going to do us any good for throwing uh PPW shows are our fans pack the venue every time they want to get sweaty they want to get together they want to cheer and, and cheer <clears throat> cheer and yell so uh yeah we're just going to wait a little bit until we can get more people in there and, and give give them the wrestling experience they deserve and want oh for sure and in the meantime you know what we just recently released PPW Revolution episode 3 on the PPW YouTube channel so check that out it's a great match is featured there uh, we're going to be having, as soon as possible, going to get around to getting episode four out. I can't guarantee which day that's going to be, but I'm going to work to try to have a fast turnaround on getting that episode out for you guys. And that one featuring the big unsanctioned fight between Jacob Creed and Michael Allen Richard Clark. It's going to be balls to the wall excitement in that one. So everybody look forward to that when it comes out. And also in the meantime, we're taking the individual matches from previous shows on PPW and releasing them as single matches. So if you don't have the time to sit down and watch an entire hour or sit down and watch a couple of hours of professional wrestling and you want to go check out the matches of some of your favorites, hey, we're going to put them up there for you. I'm going to try to have one out per every weekend for the next little while to keep you all entertained during this time until we can get back to some in-ring professional wrestling. Anyway, in the meantime, let's go back to our topic, though, Papa Smokes, the Northern Alberta Invitational Tournament. That's the semifinals and the finals. Our first matchup, we had the Giant Orion taking on the Man of Two Minds, Jack Pride. Uh, your thoughts on this particular match? Um, pretty good one. I like both these competitors. Uh, uh, PPW has hosted Jack Pride a number of times and uh, love his uh, character, love his in-ring work giant orion we've seen a little bit from before seems like he's uh getting his uh skills together in the ring uh, this one wasn't a super long match uh, the 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 giant was uh, tossing uh, pride around a little bit at the beginning just using superior size and strength uh, pride uh, is a quick wrestler and he uh he got a couple of uh, offensive moves in including uh riding the giants back in a sleeper and such like that but uh 
the giant uh, just too strong too big uh took pride apart uh, gave him that razor's edge type uh power bomb move and uh got the win to advance yeah and i mean yeah it was a hell of a start to the night and everything like that and like you said jack pride i uh, love his work uh really enjoy him personally um you know worked with him a couple times there with prairie pro uh not had the opportunity to work with giant orion but you know what the big boy's got my attention now papa smokes especially after seeing a yeah. few of his matchups you know what i i'm always open to the idea of having giant orion come around to town because i think uh I think Saskatoon's ready for this guy. I think so too. Uh, uh, any giant uh, can make your uh, wrestling promotion uh, just look that much bigger with his presence there. Definitely so. So Giant O'Ryan picking up the win, as we said in that one. So he'd be moving on to the final. But who's he going to be going against? We've got another interesting matchup in the semifinals between Michael Richard Blaze and Dylan Stone. Thoughts here? Yeah, this is a match I was looking quite forward to, especially after round one. I I uh, was new to Dylan Stone's work. I really like this guy. He comes into the ring with uh, incredible confidence and a lot of swagger, and uh, just he, he looks the part of a star. He acts like a star and a top guy, and uh, uh, I really like his stuff. Uh, Michael Richard Blaze, I'm obviously a huge fan of already, too. I believe he's one of the best wrestlers in not just in western canada but all of canada i'll check out a match of his anytime and uh, this was a really quite a good one uh, uh blaze really playing the heel in this one uh, uh slow to get starting s slow to get started uh, using the psychological tactics uh, uh jumping out of the ring and uh, delaying the uh, start of the match and stuff like that but uh, uh Blaze came on strong in that match, and uh, uh, he he was he, we were just talking about Bret Hart. It looked like he was uh, he he had an attitude about him, like he was trying to prove something, like he was on the level with uh, Bret Hart as far as a Canadian and Alberta wrestler goes, and made a great case for for I think being on that level uh, in the modern days of uh, of uh, current wrestling and such using uh, the sharpshooter and a few other moves and uh, Stone also came back through uh, through uh, Blaze's onslaught quite nicely uh, Dylan Stone had a couple of uh, over the top belly to belly suplexes where it just showing a lot of strength sh uh, throwing Blaze a tremendous uh, distance across the ring very very good looking suplexes and uh yeah, a good back and forth battle until uh, Blaze hits that brain buster, and then you know not too many people will get up from that. And Dylan Stone wasn't able to, but a fine, fine second round match. Oh, f fine match in general. I mean, I enjoyed the work of both these guys in this one. Uh, personally, possibly my favorite uh, competitive match of the entire tournament, even. And that's not to take away from the other matches. This one was just that good. That it really stood out for me. I uh, really enjoyed the work of both of them. And speaking of confidence, one of the things I did like a lot off the start there, Papa Smokes, is when Michael Richard Blaze comes out and already he's smack talking the giant Orion like he's got this thing in the bag and that he's heading yeah. straight to that final with the big boy. Yeah, yeah. Blaze is, is just such a great talent, uh, both verbally and his in ring work. And uh, he's going to get the crowd involved and uh, interactive in his match no matter what happens and uh that just always a treat for me to watch uh, michael richard plays definitely so so that meant the uh finals were set so mrb going to be taking on giant orion for the final in this tournament uh but before that there was actually another match on the card for us to enjoy we're going over to uh women's wrestling and zoe sager who has been uh, quite the rising star for Prairie Pro Wrestling. In fact, undefeated in singles competition for Prairie Pro Wrestling. And she was taking on Taryn from Accounting. Uh, not familiar with Taryn from Accounting's work prior to this match myself personally. I'm not sure uh, if you were familiar with any of her previous matches there, Papa Smokes. No, uh, I, I'm not. But I have heard her name and uh, chuckled at that before. Uh, quite funny and I've uh, been interested to check out her stuff. 
And didn't this turn out to be a good match? Hey, did, what did you think of this one, Munson? I actually really, really enjoyed it. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I expected to see a good match with Zoe. I mean, we know what to expect from her. She does excellent work for Prairie Pro Wrestling and really been enjoying what she's been doing and really watching her grow as a performer. Uh, but, you know, going into it and hearing the the talk about it going into it, I wasn't sure because I don't didn't know any, anything from Taryn from accounting at all. But I guess... In that sense, just like with uh, some of the other competitors we've seen in the tournament, like Dylan Stone and the Giant Orion, where I wasn't familiar, you know, they've now got my attention because this was an excellent performance. I thought it was a great one-on-one -on -one encounter from both Taryn and Zoe. A great match, and Taryn picking up a excellent victory for herself, looking really strong in this one. Yeah, and I think that's uh, one of the strengths of uh, wrestlers, too, is if they can get your attention by you only watching one of their matches, then they've done their job, right? Because now I, I would I would gladly watch more matches from some of these people I haven't seen, including Taryn from Accounting. She was uh, she she looks like she hasn't been in wrestling all that long, but put on a really good match, and it, and uh, she did that series of backbreakers where she was just just manhandling uh, Zoe. And the the strength shown there was quite impressive, also, and. Uh, I also liked uh, Sager's match too because uh, in PPW we've mostly seen her uh, or pretty much solely seen her wrestling uh, men but I thought when she uh, had this match against Taryn that Zoe looked like she had a little bit of a chip on her shoulder a little bit of extra intensity with that which I don't know if it was the uh, fact that she was fighting a fellow women's competitor but uh, I just thought it was quite a good match by Zoe Sager also so thumbs up to that one as well definitely so a great surprise but yes I gotta say like that to me kind of ranked up there I mean if you take it for total matches and don't just include the tournament that match was a, a great addition to the entire thing and so glad that they put it on uh, happy to have watched that one and might even go back and watch this entire show again sometime soon because it was worth every bit of my time. That might be the first time I've seen Zoe Sager get pinned one, two, three, two. It also shocked me the ending to it too. So well, actually, yeah, well actually, she has been pinned in Prairie Pro Wrestling. To be honest with you, I always oh, claim no. that she's uh, not been beaten in singles competition because if we go back to last summer, there, Papa Smokes, she was actually the one that took the three, uh, full, uh, the three count. Uh, against Sheik Shabazz and Phil Deadly in the triple threat to make it to the semifinals of the uh, inaugural tournament there for us for the Lethal Lottery tournament. So she has All taken right. a pinfall in front of our own eyes, but only that once in a triple threat match. I stand corrected, Munson. <laughs> well, I do know my PPW taste pretty decently at this point. <laughs> uh, I've seen them a couple times over and over. So, but... <laughs> Still, anyway, great matchup, uh, great time watching that. And then the finals come about, and we hear that uh, MRB has been working with an injury, something about a pectoral injury or a shoulder injury, something like that. Uh, Joanne Orion, I mean, man, that guy's taking some licks from the guys he's gone against in the tournament. And now the two lock up in this final match, Papa Smokes. What did you think of this one? Well, I wasn't sure what was going to happen in this one. Obviously, uh MRB would have to have a, a very strong game plan going into that. There's such a size differential and a difference in uh, strength and raw power too, but I have all the confidence in the world in Blaze, and uh, I, I knew he would pull a good match out of it, but uh, this one didn't last too long, did it? No, it really didn't. And I mean, you might be able to argue that uh, MRB working with an injury might have been able to do a little bit more if he was at 100%, but at the same time, you know, both competitors had to fight previous matches and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's just the way the cookie crumbles when it comes to tournament action. Uh, the Giant Orion, you got to be ready for him. The bo big boy is in there, to, and he means business. And, man, did he mean business against MRB, picking up the big win. Uh, I know the boys in Alberta said, you know, a big surprise to see Giant Orion picking up the win. But I'm seeing uh, big things in the future for this giant man. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's looking good. He's... He's not only so huge, but he's he's obviously worked hard on his body. He's very strong, and uh, he did a couple of those big moves, uh, including the giant choke slam, which really had uh, Blaze on the ropes there. But uh, 
uh, remember the finish of that match was the uh, the, the seven foot tall moon salt from the top rope. Like yeah. this, to, for a man that size to do a move like that is is really quite impressive, and uh, he earned every bit of that victory. I don't often jump off the couch and pop very much when I'm seeing things anymore, considering how much I watch all the time now. But that made me jump off the couch and pop a little bit, Papa Smokes, and I can only imagine witnessing that in person i'm waiting for the opportunity to see that giant man do that right before my very eyes yeah that's gonna help make his name and get him some fans and uh, get him more bookings around canada love if he could uh, stop by saskatoon sometime hopefully once it's all cleared up that'll be one of the names on the list that we can get down here one of these days looking forward to those opportunities papa smokes i gotta say i'm missing the hell out of the fans just as much as i'm missing the hell out of the matches too uh no, we've got a lot of fans out there that are dying to see the matches again, see the performers again, but also just to get back together as a community, it's something we've really missed out on and I'm really missing, uh, you know, I miss a lot of miss a lot of the people you're used to seeing, uh, you know, the PPW super fam, I miss the hell out of them, you know, and then our good friends yeah. like Deucey D coming down from Regina and, you know, Alex Tosh, Massacino, the whole crew, I'm missing the hell out of these guys all of them everybody and you know i just can't wait to the opportunity to get to see everyone once again at a live show no same thing for me too and, and like you were saying off the bat it, it's looking like some companies are going to start tentatively doing some shows here and there with less people it's it's music to my ears it means that we're not too far off now hopefully and i uh, can't wait to get back to it Fingers crossed. But in the meantime, everybody, you know, it's been a tough time for everybody, especially those involved in the wrestling industry themselves. The performers are who I'm talking about. Uh, they, these guys, they spend their lives on the road doing this for a living. That's how they make their living. And when there's no shows for months on end, that means that there's no income for these guys for months on end. So whatever you can do to go help and support them, you know, check out their stuff online. If they have merchandise, do some purchasing of their merchandise if you can afford to do so. It'll do everything to help get these guys back in the spirit and get ready to go once we can lift these restrictions and start doing those live events again. So definitely check those out. And also, if you want a PPW shirt, get a hold of our man Papa Smokes there. He'll uh, he'll make sure to hook you up with a Prairie Pro Wrestling shirt coming up here as well, too. But Papa Smokes, we got one more topic we need to talk about tonight. We're going a little bit more retro. And this one is going to be, you know, we wanted to bring it up due to, you know, some of the uh, things that have come up in the news as of late. Some really uh, horrible things that have been going on with uh, race issues and stuff like that. And we wanted to talk about some of the great African-American wrestlers of, of all time. And I want you to uh, lead the fans into it. Let's uh, let's talk African-American wrestlers of the past. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just thought it might be nice to, uh, with all the negativity that's going on in, in race relations in the U.S. right now, let's turn it around and talk about some of the positive stuff that's happened in the past in wrestling with uh, Afro-American grapplers. So, uh we thought we'd concentrate on uh, on two or three guys here and uh, just talk about some of the some of the uh, struggles and some of the victories that they've had uh, in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, I wanted to start with uh, Bearcat Wright, a uh, wrestler from the 50s and 60s, son of a boxer and had been a boxer himself, uh, a very large man, 6'6", 275, and... Uh, was strongly against uh, segregation in the boxing world and then when he got into professional wrestling he realized there was some there too and was also outspoken about that but um he uh he wrestled around the u.s for a while and then ended up in uh, los angeles for the wwa which used to be uh in the old days one of the one of the main world titles uh uh, as well as uh, AWA, NWA, and WWF. Um, yeah, so Bearcat Wright is is considered the first uh, black heavyweight champion in wrestling. Uh, I know that uh, if you look it up now, that uh, on WWE centric uh, reports and and sources, they they will often list uh, Ron Simmons as the first black heavyweight champion when he won the WCW title in the 90s. It's also a, a great feat, but um, uh, in truth, if you really want to get down to it, it was Bearcat Wright with the WWA champion 
championship in uh, in the 60s he won it from fred blassie and uh just wanted to uh give a shout out to bearcat Wright, uh, a fine athlete and a fine man by the sound of it uh, except that uh, he also got in once he was champion he got in a bit of a dispute with the promoter there and uh was refusing to drop the belt. They they were gonna, after a few months of him holding it, they were gonna put it back on Blassie. But uh, Bearcat, not having any of that title change, uh, was just told them straight out he wasn't gonna drop it. So they put him in a match with a masked guy, a championship match, and Bearcat was kind of uh, wondering what was going on with this masked uh, unknown guy in the match, and uh, he kind of got the feeling that something was up there and it's probably lucky he did because uh, they had brought in judo gene labelle and put the mask on him uh, uh the the toughest and the the most vicious of the shooters uh which way he was going to go into business for himself and take that belt off right uh, no matter what and that would definitely be the guy to do it i, I think bearcat very smart not to uh not to engage in that match so he ended up giving up the belt anyway and not competing in that final match uh, kind of a little interesting story of uh of a promoter going into business for himself sort of thing uh, wouldn't you say Munson? definitely so and uh if i'm not mistaken bearcat right also known uh at times to team up with one of the other guys on our uh list here today and that being uh bobo brazil yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bobo, also a huge man, too. So imagine the imposing uh, figure these two would have struck as a tag team. Yeah, they would have uh, dominated over most of the tag teams that we see in uh, in the ring these days, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, we can talk about Bobo with Brazil a little bit here, too. He started in Chicago in the 50s, and uh, he was... Uh, a baby face also which wasn't common at that time i guess promoters used to uh used to uh kind of go on racial tension a little bit and have uh uh black wrestlers be the the villain in those matches and uh because uh, presumably a a white dominated audience at that time would would like to uh, jeer against uh, the uh, african american uh, wrestler in the match but uh uh, fans liked Bobo Brazil. They liked them a lot, so uh, they used them as a baby face back then in Chicago and, and throughout the Midwest. And uh, he also had the distinction of being uh, the first wrestler to start going over on uh, on white opponents and getting the wins that that didn't usually happen. They often used uh, black wrestlers as uh, preliminary talent uh, and uh, undercard kind of guys. Uh, uh, always uh, 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 a lot of those guys looked really good with the uh, athleticism and such, but it just wasn't uh, wasn't in the social climate to have them uh, beating white wrestlers. But yeah, uh, Bobo Brazil uh, started doing that. That that was a big step forward for the uh, for the African Americans in wrestling for sure. Definitely so. And uh, you know, you brought up the fact that Ron Simmons often recognized as the first African American world champion. Uh, but, you know, when we're talking about Bobo Brazil, and I uh, found this out through my research, is that uh, he actually sort of won the NWA championship at one point and stuff, but had to refuse it due to the uh, antics that occurred during the ending of the match, and therefore never actually officially recognized as the, by the NWA as having won the world championship. Yeah, yeah, that's right, too. But later on, he also won that WWA championship, too, so became a world champion out there in Los Angeles, too. Uh, so uh, definitely a trendsetter uh, in that world as well. Um, yeah, even in the South, uh, where, where uh, you know, things were even a little more tense between uh, uh, between uh, people of different uh, ethnicities, uh, uh Brazil was was a, a, a top guy. It was a was a huge draw. He was drawing money down there in the south as a black wrestler. Was, in those times, like before the junkyard dog and such like that, it was it was pretty rare, and especially to get the victories over the white wrestlers and taking a huge step in there. And if you remember Bobo Brazil, he had the he had the famous headbutt that he called the Coco Butt. And his uh, his claim to fame was having the hardest head in wrestling. So obviously a, a very useful weapon there and uh, obviously very successful for him too. 
And uh, also Bobo Brazil, uh, well known as being a mentor to somebody who fans might uh, recognize a little bit more. And that would be Rocky Johnson, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's father. Yeah, for sure. They're a tag team too, huh? Eh? Yeah, okay. I didn't come across that, but I'm going to have to look that up now that you say that. But I knew that there was a mentorship there and everything from when I was looking into this and thought that was quite an interesting fact as well too. Yeah, isn't that a good one, eh? How the it, it the cycle goes on. The, the the older guys teach the younger guys, and you get more and more great wrestlers. Exactly, and we need to keep that going, even in this modern day and everything. But yeah, Bo Bo's Brazil, uh, great career there and everything. And uh, I knew a little bit more about him than I did about uh, Bearcat, I guess, before this whole thing. Um, a lot more interesting going and checking out a lot more too from Bearcat now that I've looked into. A little bit more of his career and I mean man the physical size 6'6 six, six on both him and Bobo Brazil and like you said like 275 pushing 300 pounds on these boys like I mean back in the days when I mean wrestlers looked like uh, absolute beasts yeah yeah absolutely and uh, if any for anyone that wants to check out some of Bobo Brazil's uh, great matches to his his feud with the Sheik in uh, Detroit uh, territory that is just extremely famous like they had a they had a feud that went on for years and decades even in some wild matches the two of them uh, uh, i can't recommend it enough check out bobo brazil versus the, the original chica from detroit it's great great stuff definitely so and then uh, also on our list here today and someone who also kind of plays right into this having uh, had some uh, time in the ring with guys like bobo brazil is uh, ernie ladd the big cat yeah, yeah, Ernie Ladd's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I, I absolutely love his stuff, and uh, he fits into this discussion today too because uh, he was uh, he stood strong about some of those issues uh, involving racism uh, first in the uh, in the world of football, but also in the world of wrestling too. And uh, uh, Ernie was taking no guff from anyone that was going to uh, try and stand in his way over reasons of skin color or anything like that. Uh, when he was uh, played for the San Diego Chargers, this is back before there was the, the leagues combined into the NFL. This was uh, the, in the American Football League back in the 60s. But, uh, yeah, he, found, he he was an all-star player, a defensive tackle, uh, a even huger man than the guy we've been talking about. The lad was 6'9 and 300 pounds, uh, absolutely giant of a man and uh he was a four-time all-star and has a has an afl championship with the uh chargers but him and some of the other uh, uh black fellows in in the uh, playing football at that time were also subject to some discrimination and some racism and uh he was uh not shy to to sit out and and, and to stand up and and say i'm not putting up with this kind of treatment I'm a, uh, I'm a player just like anybody else. I'm getting paid just like the other guys, and I play just like the other guys. I'm not having this racist stuff. I, I just, I simply uh, will sit out for this. It's kind of like uh, Kaepernick taking a knee back in the day. You know, there there were guys that that had that on their mind too, and that weren't afraid to challenge the uh, existing system uh, in order to uh, to benefit their the the cause. You know, and uh, Ernie Ladd was strong that way. He he did it in wrestling too. He uh, he wouldn't stand for anybody uh, discriminating against him, uh, promoters, wrestlers, or otherwise. Definitely, and one of the other distinctions that Ernie Ladd uh, also held for many many years was that he was the very first and for a long time the only wrestler to be inducted both in the WCW Hall of Fame and the WWF Hall of Fame up until I guess at least the um. um two companies merged in the 2000s there yeah yeah and and lad was one of those guys that uh he was uh similar to uh say an andre or a bruiser brody that never really settled down too long in any promotion because he was a draw he was people wanted to see him he was huge he was uh so tremendously excellent on the mic um, he has some hilarious promos and some very, very convincing promos. That's one of the best part of Ernie Ladd's wrestling work, I think, is uh, what an excellent and funny talker that guy is on the mic. And uh, 
he yeah he was a draw everywhere he went and uh and uh he got a lot of uh, fame like he he fought in the old ww wwf against the key main event at madison square garden against bruno sammartino for the title he's had title shots against bob backland up in new york too but uh a lot of his uh, a lot of his fame came from uh, when he wrestled in the South and uh, for uh, Mid South uh, under Bill Watts and uh, down in Tennessee and Kentucky and Florida, Texas, all over the place. So uh, uh, he also had a good head for the business and learned a lot of stuff along the way, including uh, Cowboy Bill Watts, who had who had been a a genius promoter and a genius booker and and he learned uh, a lad lad learned a lot from bill watts so he was booking um uh, uh very thriving territories for a while there including that mid-south in uh in memphis tennessee uh, and uh i think that was part of uh, the reason that he was getting so big in wcw too was was not a, not nearly at all as a wrestler he was old and injured by that time but uh as a talent scout and a, a developer of talent and as a, a booker and a writer. Yeah, definitely. So, and you know, uh, I really enjoy his work. I've seen uh, a little bit more of Ernie Ladd's and stuff like that. And then, like you said, one of your favorites, um, I haven't had a chance to really enjoy him as much as you have, but I've gone back and watched a little bit more of his stuff recently, Papa Spokes. And you're right, man, this guy was just awesome. I mean, he was an attraction. He was awesome performer in the ring. Uh, I, well, not the probably the best guy to ask what some of the best matches of his are to watch. But if you could uh, pick a couple of matches that really, really stand out for the fans that they should go and watch right now, what would they be? Um, I would say uh, he had a huge feud with Dusty Rhodes. There's a bunch of good ones through that. Um, Andre the Giant. He was used as a as a big guy that could uh, stand up to Andre the Giant. Um, he also had a big long feud with uh, Native American Wahoo McDaniel. That's really good stuff. And uh, someone that just passed away in the past week, Mister Wrestling Two, uh, a big star in Georgia. Lad had a long, long program with uh, Wrestling Two there, and uh, that's also good stuff. So, but I, I re- highly recommend the uh, promos too. And uh, don't know if I should even bring it up on this episode, but. Uh, Ernie Ladd was notoriously un-PC in his uh, promos. Uh, uh, you'll hear him say some stuff that would be considered pretty objectionable today. He always had uh, mocking nicknames for his uh, opponents and enemies. And, uh, man, like, the man spoke his mind. I, I got to admire him for that. And uh, really great stuff. I mean, obviously, he was a trendsetter for his time and everything like that. And more people should be going back and paying attention to him and anybody that we've got on this list. In fact, I think that these are great picks that you came up with here, Papa Smokes. And uh, I think all fans should take the time to go out and just uh, respect the hell out of what these guys did and uh, the paths that they created for, you know, a lot of the guys that you see today. Yeah, yeah. And I, I again, I have all the respect in the world for them, especially for uh, not only forging a path for themselves in a, in a difficult business like professional wrestling, but doing it with kind of a handicap too. at, at that time, their their skin color was considered a detriment to their uh, prospects in the business, too. And the fact that these, you know, this good handful of uh, not only the guys we've talked about, but more than that, too, uh, uh didn't let that hold them back and stood up for themselves and uh, and stood up for their for their people and uh, I, I just have all the admiration in the world for that definitely so and you know I mean we've uh, we, we've done really good I think with uh, trying to uh, pay respect here and everything like that but uh, before we end this topic I just want to say you know like people need to take the time to just go out and you know show a little respect to one another and stuff like that there's so much hatred going around in this world right now papa smokes and i think unnecessarily so like we don't need to be going back and resorting to the the ways that things used to be back in the day and stuff we should be a more progressive society nowadays and that i really saddened to see that as a society we haven't done that and that things have been really really hard nowadays for people yeah, yeah, I, I can't disagree with you there, Munson. It, it, even just reading on uh, social media, just 
seems like everybody's so angry and I, I just I don't think that's the right way to go I, everybody gets angry about stuff sometimes but uh, uh, I, re- I really wish people would uh, try and take a, a cool down take a logical look at the things around them and, and try and improve things and, and make them better instead of just lashing out and, it, and, and if they uh, I was going to say, if they li- live here in Canada, they need to take a pop of smoke and uh, chill out. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's <laughs> the solution. But uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I agree with you about all that stuff. We, we look at the wrestling world and there's just a lot of anger and a lot of uh, accusations and then all kinds of stuff coming out about other people. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it's warranted and, and serious stuff has to get out there. I understand that too. But uh, uh, if, it, if it's just about uh, wrestlers you like and wrestlers you don't like it, chill out, man. Like everybody can have their flavor of ice cream and, and we can all get along. And uh, yeah, just be nice to each other. Exactly. I mean, there needs to be a little bit more love shown and stuff like that. Not enough of it these days. And especially right now, I mean, with what the world's been going through, I kind of thought maybe there would be hope that society would come out on the better end of this thing. But with the way things have been going through the news and stuff like that, man, I'm a little bit disappointed in humanity at the moment and hope that people smarten up and definitely hope that all of us in the wrestling community can definitely smarten up and uh, hopefully respect everybody out there because we're all human beings at the end of the day. Uh, everybody deserves to be respected. And you know what? If people are upset about something and they want to go voice their opinion about it, stay the hell out of their way and let them voice their opinion about it. Don't get involved. If it doesn't involve you in the first damn place, let them speak their minds. They're entitled to as human beings. Let's go and show people respect. Show some love out there. Man, it just needs to... Things need to change a little bit, Papa Smokes. But that being said, uh, do you have any last uh, things to mention about uh, this, this topic here? Um, no, not really, but uh, it's been fun talking about uh, uh, Afro-Americans in, in wrestling. I, I don't think that we have to treat them like they get their own topic or their own separate show. Uh, 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 Afro-Americans have been a, a vital part of wrestling uh, since since the beginning, I think, and uh, and uh, I, I like talking about uh, all these topics, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, I just uh, like to bring a little awareness, and if it's timely with what's going on in the world, then so be it, and, and uh, we can talk about it then. I'm glad we did, and we were able to do it in a respectful way that I hope everybody enjoyed here today, and that you'll go and check all those guys out, because they deserve to be checked out, and you know what? Support all kinds of wrestling that's out there, everybody. There's lots of great wrestling going on, uh, and you know what? We're all going to get back to doing wrestling as it should be done in front of a live audience soon enough. But you know what? That's going to be a wrap for today on Ring Respect. We had three great topics. Another wonderful show, in my personal opinion. I always love and enjoy doing this with you, Papa Smokes. Uh, glad we were able to do this one more time. And uh, we'll get these uh, get these Ring Respects rolling as often as possible for all of you out there who are really enjoying these things. And you know what? If you want to have Papa Smokes and I bring up a topic of interest, you know, let us know in the comments section below or reach out to Papa Smokes and I anytime. Uh, let us know what kind of topics you want to talk about, and we'll talk about them here on the show. And, you know, if you're that interested as well, too, and you want to voice your opinion on it, uh, let us know. Maybe we can set something up and uh, get another voice heard in here as well, too, Puff Smokes. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be fun. Uh, suggest some stuff. Uh, we, we, we'll talk about anything uh, from modern stuff to retro wrestling as well. And, uh, yeah, let us know what you're thinking and let us know what your opinions are. We'll all talk about it. Sounds like a great plan. But as always, we're going to ask you to go ahead and click the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Turn on the notification bell so you know anytime we release new material here on the Video Bros Network. Uh, From myself and Papa Smokes, though, it's been one hell of a time. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.